and welcome back to Beyond Gardens Live. You're in the company of John Colwell, John McWilliams and Gary Hetty, and we are awaiting your company. A couple of ways you can get in touch with us, and they're very easy, really. There is the phone. Yes, 64685994. And there is the email. Yeah, that's tv at beyondgardens.com.au. Just before the break, we were attempting to show you a couple of pictures. Well, we've managed to find them. Uh, they were tucked away down at the back of the garden shed. Um, so, Gary, just refresh my mind. We were talking about... Yeah, so Lance from Claremont had watched last week's show, mm -hmm. was wondering how do we work out whether he's got enough compost or more organic matter in his soil already. And he's obviously been to a workshop, so he's learnt the uh, glass jar trick. Mm. And he sent some pictures along to see what we reckon about his veggie garden for a start. Okay. And the glass, glass jar, jar trick is? Is basically we get, um, you scrape down some soil down to 30 centimetres, put it in the jar, half fill the jar, then put the rest of water, shake it up vigorously for about five minutes, leave it overnight to settle, and all the various layers will settle out to give you an indication of what's in the soil. Okay, all right. So that was the process that we went, that uh, Caller yeah. went through. And this is the result. And the first one is uh, in the vegetable garden, I think, isn't it? Yes, Vicky. Yes. Is it there? Are we going to win this time? It was yes. there. Yes. yes. There it is. Wonderful. So there's the jar in the bottom, you can see. Now, the lighter <coughs> stuff in the bottom is sand. Well, see, lighter coloured, I should say. It's actually the heaviest material of all because it drops out, settles out, first of all. Then the darker stuff on top is organic matter? It's organic matter, yeah. Yes. So that's the stuff that he's been putting in over, over quite a few years. And so then, by the look of that, he's ooh, about 40% organic matter in that yeah. mix. Just as a, rough, as a rough look there, yeah, certainly time to ease off on the organic matter. Okay. In mm. fact, probably stop for a little while. The problem being? Uh, the problem being with the, the, with the, the higher concentration of organic matter, you can start introducing, well, you can start encouraging a lot more pests and diseases mm. and waterlogging as well. And we obviously okay. want that free drainage. But he didn't stop at one picture. No, no. Not another one. Oh, it's and good. This oh, is, look, this technology. Is, yeah, yeah, look, isn't it great? The... And, and this is interesting because now if you look at the proportions, first of all, the murky water on the top is water plus maybe a little bit of silt and a little bit of clay. Yep. It's not clear, is it? And, and then we've got the organic matter and then sand at the bottom again. And this is... Um, is this out on the verge? Is that right? No, or this is... This is, this is in the veggie pa patch again. Veggie the veggie patch, patch yep. Okay, so, again, maybe a tad too much? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you can almost see by looking at that soil, um, there, is, there is a lot of, a lot of chunks yeah. of organic matter in there and we, we need to see probably a little bit more sand and probably more a, a, a colouring and going to say 10, 15% organic matter, will, will, you'll certainly see a little bit of organic matter, but you, you, it's the colouring almost changes. Yes. And, yes. Okay, yeah. and this is the last one. This is interesting, isn't it? Because mm. this is quite different. So this is Lance's verge. Now he's got a native veget vegetation out the front. He hasn't improved it nearly as much because of course it's not required. But note the thin layer of organic matter. Mm. 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 And also the fact that the top there is quite milky. Mm. So, uh, and that would indicate the presence of clay. Yeah, there's something, something there floating around because the, yes. the silt will be the last layer on, on this, this settling mm. out process. And, and what's interesting out of that to me is also the fact that we've got a very small layer of organic matter, but in it, he's grown. This is out on the verge, did you say? Yes. Yeah. Um, so he's growing plants that are used to a low level of organic mm. matter in, there in the first place. And they're thriving. You can see just a corner there of, of the picture, mm. and, and they're doing very, very well. So basically, all we're using that organic matter is to start the feeding process of creating life in the soil. And all we're saying with the veggie garden and the others is to just Ease back, you don't need huge amounts that everyone's advocating yep, these yep. days. I would probably say as well is looking at some of those pictures from Lance there of the veggie garden, he's, it looks like he's got a little bit of straw that mm. he's probably used as a, mm. as a mulch. I would probably look at just getting some rough, coarse, irregular mulch, shredded tree prunings, pine bark, something like that, and spreading that over the, um, the straw. Yeah. And that would probably be your organic matter for probably the next year. Because if, that's if what it does. Longer, as it longer. Yes, down, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, the okay. good, and the good news for Lance is you don't have to do all that hard work for the next no. couple of years. Basically, just re enjoy it, maybe put a little bit of trace elements on it if, the, if they're needed, but let your and garden thrive now. Eat your veggies. Eat your veggies. Yeah. Eat your veggies. Enjoy them. Enjoy it. Enjoy yeah, the veggies, yes. Exactly. Uh, now, we have, um, on a similar uh, line, we actually had an email from uh, one of our listeners who's, who's got a problem um, with 
potential trace element problems. Yes. But perhaps uh, should we leave that aside and go to the phones? I Batman? think we will. We'll go, we'll go okay. to the call. Yes. Uh, hello. Welcome to Beyond Gardens Live. Hello. Hello. Um, this is Karen Wilkinson. Um, I um, went to a nursery years and years ago, about roughly about 30 years ago, and bought some sweet pea, uh, sorry, desert pea, uh, uh, a little plants, and put them in my garden. And I live in Hamilton Hill, which is very sandy, um, and they come out pink, um, but came out of a bit like a small hill from the, from the fence, and they grew quite good. Um, I then moved to the country and I grew some there and of course I turned and I got them uh, to grow for about two years. I pruned them and they turned out red, which is good. Um, since uh, I've come back sorry, Karen, can I just interrupt? And I'm sorry to do this to you. Um, I've got everything except what it actually is that you're growing. Um, stirred peas. Stirred peas. Pea. Pea. Okay. All right. Lovely. Okay. Um, uh, and um, I've come back to uh, back to Hamilton Hill now, um, and I've tried everywhere for the plants to dirt peas and couldn't find any. Anyway, somebody gave me some seeds, and I was just wondering um, what would I have to put in my garden? I've got a native garden in the front, which I've had for about 30, 40 years. Um, what would I have to put in the sand um, in my front garden to make them turn red? Ah, well, and how will I, how will well, I do okay. nothing? Yeah. Here's the frustrating part, Karen. Uh, first of all, this is what a picture of a red stirred pea yeah. looks like. Just to, uh, Actually, that doesn't look very red, does it? Can we do better than that? Um, oh, oh, it does. That oh, that's really nice. Okay. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that, that's better. Now, uh, yeah. a stirred pea, um, which has had more name changes than you and I have had hot dinners, by the way, <laughs> um, yeah. currently known as Swainsona, for my sake, yeah. is one of those plants that is extraordinarily variable genetically. Um, yeah. So... The colour of the flowers is determined by the genetics of the seed, not by what you do to it. Oh. It's luck of the draw, Karen. Uh -huh. um, chances are, of course, if you've got seed from somebody which is a nice red flowered plant, then you would get a red one. Let me see. I'm sure I've got a picture. A white one is the one we yeah, all used to hunt for, ones. actually, in the old days. Um, yeah. I thought I had a picture of the white one, but it doesn't spring immediately to mind. It's, um, it, it's a wonderful plant. It's much tougher than most people give it credit for. When you yeah. grow it in the garden, and that's it, growing incidentally in the northwest in terrible yeah. soil, um, yeah. when you grow it in the garden, if you give it extra water and you give it fertiliser, you might be surprised how well it grows. I had ones that were almost 10 metres across at one stage. Oh. Just um, absolutely massive. My, uh, yeah. my son is up north at the moment, oh, he's in, in um, uh, Marawa at the moment. Would, yeah. would, a, a benefit if I got him to get and bring me some red dirt from up there? Uh, not really. No, because really. It, it's in the seed. It, yeah. it, that's what determines the colour rather than the soil you're growing it in. And Sorry, would I Karen. Have German, and and how, how would I germinate? Just put, um, wouldn't just... It, it, they're one of those hard-coated seeds, uh, so, which is their protection against germinating first year. Um, if you want to overcome that, you have to break through the dormancy. A couple of ways of doing it, soaking it, a lot of people yeah. say pour boiling water on. I'm a little sus about boiling water, but hot water certainly. Leave it and you will see the seeds uh, that swell up, and they really do swell up, uh, yeah. are the ones you sow. Or alternately, if you're nimble with your fingers, hold the seed between finger and thumb, use a pair of secateurs and just nick the very side off. Very, okay. very side. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. then you can sow it straight away. Oh, good. and would I have to wet the soil first or just put it in dry? No, no, then you can sow it in dry soil. Yep. Scatter it around. Yep. Let nature okay. take over. Yep. Yes. Good Thank luck. Thank you very much. I hope it grows for a stunning plant, wonderful plant. We yep. should grow more of them, I think. And it's a great time to be sowing them right now. And even although we're talking about sowing them right now, if you go up to Northwest, they're in flower yes, right now. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yep. We have another caller on the line. Hello, are you there? Mm. Uh, you'll, have um, you, you'll, have to turn, you'll have to turn the TV down. Sorry, folks, a reminder if you do call, we love your calls. Oh, okay. But it is necessary to turn the sound down on the TV. Yes, I've turned the sound down. All <laughs> I want is your email address. May I have your email address, please? Oh, we can do Definitely. that easily. I tell you what, we can even put it up on the screen. We're that skilled. Here we go. TV at beyondgardens.com.au. Simple. TV at... Beyondgardens.com.au. It's there in front of you right now. If you can see the TV. You can see the TV. There oh. it is. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Good Beyond on you. 
Is that all we can Thank do for you. you today? I think so. Sounds yeah. like it. Okay, one satisfied That's customer. It. We don't, Absolutely. <laughs> usually not that easy to satisfy. That was a nice easy uh, one. What about going to Dean? What about? Okay. Uh, we did get an email. Um, John, can you give me the details of the uh, gentleman with the nectarine tree? Yes. <laughs> Here we go. It's Dean from Cannington. Dean, Dean from, from Cannington. Cannington. Yes, hello. Uh, great new program. I have a nectarine tree and the leaves are really yellowing. I have fertilised it fairly regularly, so I am not sure if it is due to the weather cooling down. Thank okay. you, Dean in Cannington. And, and, and Gary is working brilliantly. Look, he's got the picture yeah, up there. Um, Dean, my thought would be looking at that, that there's a bit more than ageing going on, a bit more than pre-autumn colour withdrawal, yes? Yes, I see this a lot. It, and I live near the coast with highly alkaline soil, so even if you have the trace element that that's indicating, uh, the pH of the soil is probably not allowing it to be absorbed by the plant. Fortunately, Dean sent us a couple of pictures. Uh, yeah. Maybe get, now yeah. you're the skilled technical expert, Gary. Jesus. You can show yeah. us the other picture as well. I hope you're impressed. Um, because this really does <laughs> tell the story, doesn't it? Yes. Um, when we look at this picture, we can see that the, the plant itself is growing right up against a wall. Two things about that wall. It looks like a limestone block foundation to me. Yes. You, yes? If, if nothing else, it's, it's probably, um, it might, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, yes, it is. and the wall itself appears to be rendered. Yeah, the wall, with is, a mortar render, the wall, wall itself mortar looks render. like it's in a, either a limestone render or a concrete, yeah. well, sorry, a, a painted render. But either way, the, the concrete has a very high lime mm. content, which certainly doesn't help nectarines. Okay. And, and back to that picture again. See how close the tree mm. is to the wall. Mm. Now, Dean, mm, it's not too late. Um, th it, this is quite a common practice. People say, oh, this belly of the tree up against the wall. If it's a fruit tree, it's really not a good idea to go right up against the wall. No, absolutely not. Um, unfortunately, thanks to a lot of the trendy, trendy garden magazines and trendy TV shows, we've got to have it looking like, you know, something out of a, a magazine. And, and it's not really the way to be growing um, or trellising a lot of our fruit trees. They, that tree there would at least have to come out probably at least 30 centimetres, uh, if not more. And then if you want to push it up against the tree, it will, it will do it in time, but we do, we do need to give it some space behind that. Um, growing a nectarine or any fruit tree flat up against a wall, it's not going to develop fruit. Or if no. it does, it's not going to develop good fruit. So and and that, since that wall is limestone, again, yes. back to that point, what it means is that the roots are hitting pure limestone, yep. pure lime. Now, that is not good news because it's going to prevent them taking up the nutrients they want. So... Um, let's be helpful instead of being negative. Yes. What can we do? Um, I, number one, move the tree. Move the tree. Don't and, do it. And the supports. Yeah, that go absolutely. With it. Yeah. Don't don't do it now. Certainly, uh, do it once the tree goes into its dormancy. Yep. Um, nice and easy to move them. Um, and yeah, certainly, okay. if you are going to have it up against that wall, certainly move that plant away from the wall. And if you don't want to move it, can we isolate the plant from the wall? Uh, yes, we can. So we could put a polystyrene. Yeah, I would certainly, um, yeah, dig dig down again when this tree is dormant, um, and then you can put a physical barrier between the back of that tree and the um, and the the wall itself and the footings and probably all the the offcast cement and render and things like yeah. that as well. Everything, which is, everything else that's in and, there. And that's Dean, the I, I've it? got these trees too, and you probably can't see the size of my arm, but that'll be as thick as my my arm in another year. Mm. And you see how close it is to that, that um, wall yep. there. Yep. It's going to be banging up against that, causing you all sorts of problems. Plus, okay. the other thing you've got to realise too is that's where your termite treatment is normally put. Watering it constantly will remove the termite protection. So you really need to get yep. irrigation systems away from walls so you don't compromise the, your termite protection. So there you go, Dean. Plenty of things to do. And the other thing you can do, um, and maybe it's, it's a point we've made before, uh, please don't try and diagnose which trace element is yeah, missing. Absolutely. Rather, apply a, a fertiliser that has complete trace elements in it. Mm. Very important. Yep. Uh, I hope that helps, Dean. I expect you to hear you digging next week. <laughs> and cursing. Don't yeah. ever put it that close to a wall. Okay, <laughs> okay we actually have another call online. Um, so thanks, thanks for the calls. Uh, caller, are you there? Hello. Yes, hi. My name's Alison. Um, I lived in Sydney numerous years ago and had a banana passion fruit vine mm -hmm. and it was absolutely delicious. 
I've tried to find one over here and I just can't. I managed to get some seeds off eBay, but I just they just will not um, grow into plants. They say put them in hot water and I've done all that yep. and I just can't get any of them to go. I think the trick with the banana passion vine, um, uh, first of all, can, uh, you probably know this, but for those who are not familiar with it, um, it's, it's quite different from the normal passion vine that we grow, but it's one of about three or 400. Its flower is very specky indeed. So this is the flower of it. Um, and uh, these photographs were actually taken down at Bustleton. So it's around, I've seen it in the country a fair bit. Yep. Um, and then if you're lucky, you get the fruits, which look like this. And uh, they're... Would you say fairly similar flavour? I mean, they're a little bit different, but fairly similar. Does yeah, that make I, think, sense? I think they're a bit more mild in flavour. Yes. And yeah. they make the, mag the best banana passion fruit butter. Oh, <laughs> that sounds oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, delicious. Okay. I think let's, we better get a sample, yeah. thanks. Let's oh. get to the problem. Yeah. The problem is that um, you really need the seed to be fresh. So rather than bringing the seed in from Sydney, I would suggest you find somebody who's got it here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't run a register, but I'll give you a clue. Go to the community garden next time you're going through Bustleton and ask very nicely. Um, and okay. you never know your luck. You might get some. Uh, fresh seed is best. And, and even when it's fresh, you need to rot it. Um, so you need to drop the fruit or open the fruit and chuck the fruit into a bucket of water and... Not a bucket, a little jar of water, and leave it to rot for a week or so, and then plant. And good luck with it. Okay. I'll... Yep. yep. Thank once you. Thank you. I'll, I'll definitely try that. Yeah. Yeah. So once established, this plant is even more vigorous than the normal passion oh, vine, yeah. if, if that's possible. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary. You get, uh, you get yeah. sick of banana passion fruit very easily. Yep. Yes. Keep, keep oh your, no, no, keep... no, never. Never. Yeah. Okay. Keep your eyes Thank open, you Alison, much. because um, there are a couple of nurseries starting to stock it too. So just oh, keep... there you yep. go. Yep. So, that's good. Okay, we Thank have you, one more call. Um, and, yeah, well. And we have one more call. <laughs> I'm just Hello, time, welcome so. to Beyond Gardens Live. Hello, how are you going? Good. We're going well. Thank I've, you. I've got a problem with my, uh, uh, my uh, uh, lemon and mandarin tree. Uh, can you tell me... Uh, what can I use to uh, spray on the uh, leaves to get rid of leaf curl? Le leaf curl, is it? Yeah, leaf curl, leaf curl leaf yes. Yeah. Oh, OK. Um, well, well, yes, but, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to explain yeah, my answer? Well, I look up a picture. Leaf... Are those people not familiar with what citrus leaf miner looks uh, like? Yeah, citrus leaf miners are... Uh, 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 it's one of the little insects, um, and they do, they do, as the name suggests, they literally burrow uh, just under the, the surface of the leaf. It's, it's a cosmetic thing. I mean, most of my citrus at my place have got it, and I generally don't worry too much because no. it's not a huge amount of damage done oh, to the tree. Actually, that, that a, isn't a very good picture. From, a, from, a, cosmodi a, from a cosmetic, cosmetic. From a cosmetic <laughs> point of view, um, it, that's really all I'd be spraying for, but generally I don't Can worry... Can I use some of uh, that, that, uh, that, um, that pest, that, um, oil, or that oil, the, um, the uh, Confidor? Yeah, I think... Well, yeah. the white oil is what people normally use. Yeah. Confidor... Yeah. The trouble is that by the time you see the damage, it's too really yes, too late absolutely. to do anything. Yep. All you can do is prevent further damage. But can now I, let's can look I at prune the um, prune the tree to get rid of the leaves. Uh, no, I, no look, I wouldn't I, pull the leaf off. No, no, no there's no, a little no, point. No, I mean, uh, where the leaf mine is, can I cut the branch off or not? Oh, definitely. No, not. I wouldn't. No, it's look, it's it's cosmetic. It really I, is. I, I gave you the answer to start with yes and no uh, because. Uh, most citrus growers now don't bother to control, as John just said. They look upon it as a form of pruning, uh, and it ju only takes the new leaves. Typically, you get this serpentine pattern. That's a dead giveaway, this mm -hmm. sort of snake-like pattern that occurs on the leaves when a miner burrows through. You can see it fairly clearly yeah. there. The leaves are distorted. There's still some green.